Good evening, everybody, um, and welcome to the Housing Committee. Can everybody hear me? Don't know if to be a bit closer or not. Um, we did miss last month um, the, the last um, Council uh, Committee uh, meeting for housing, so it's good to see everybody again. Um, for those people watching at home on webcast, um, this will be recorded and retained on the Council website. Um, for those of you at home viewing the webcast, I'd like to inform you that if you look above the video, um, you'll see a resources tab. Select this and a link to the agenda will appear on your right hand side. And this will allow you to open the agenda in a PDF format and follow the discussion and debate. So I have um, one apology for tonight, and that's Councillor Joe Bird. And thank you, we've got Steve Fawkes um, stepped into a place. I don't think there's any other apologies. No? Okay. Um, can I just remind everybody of the Members' Code of Conduct and declarations of interest that we are asked to consider whether we have any disclosable pecuniary interests and or any other relevant interests in connection with any items on this agenda? And if so, we're to declare them and state the nature of that interest. No? Okay, I'll move on. Um, if we, um, if I can have um, a mover and a seconder for the minutes, providing that everybody thinks that they're okay, the last minutes. Um, happy, happy to move, Chair. Sorry, I missed that. Did you say happy to move? Yeah. yeah. Alan. And Alan, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Stuart. Okay. Um, moving on to item number five. Hopefully we're going to whiz through this. I think people have got a football match tonight, haven't they? <laughs> so I hear you. Um, item number five, um, do we have any public questions? Not that I know of, but happy to be corrected. No? Okay. Um, statements and petitions? No statements or petitions have been received, um, but do any members have a petition they'd like to submit? No? Okay. This is good, isn't it? Something's going to happen. Um, and no questions have been received by members. Uh, we're supposed to have Rosemary Boylan here um, now because she's due to present. So on item number six, the Wirral plan, delivery plans. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine, thank you. Okay, so... With the of the yeah, yeah, so with the assent of the meeting, if we uh, be happy to move, move along and then come back to see if Rosemary arrives. Okay. So, um, moving on to um, Section B, Budget and Performance. Um, with the committee's consent, um, note that item number seven has been withdrawn due to an admin error, um, and this report has actually been through the Housing Committee in March. If the committee is happy to consent, we'll move straight to item eight. Yep. Okay. Great. And could I just confirm with finance, um, with the revenue and capital outturn, when we'll have this brought to committee? Actually, I can ensure it's brought to the next committee where possible. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, moving on to item number eight then. Mark, that's over to you again. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and good evening, councillors. Uh, so the, the first report is on the it looks at the budget monitor and the budget process for next year so there's there's really three sections to the report the first looks at the 21 22 budget monitoring and details the information that the, the committee will receive each financial quarter and then sets out what the role of the committee is and its responsibilities and ensuring that the committee budget spends within available resources it then goes on to a section that looks at what's called zero-based budgeting, um, which is basically where we look at sort of resetting the budget for a service and doing a complete review of those services. And there's a £170,000 saving in the council's budget in 21-22 for this. Um, and adults' social care will be looking at that this year. The report then looks at the 22 23 budget process and how the committee, along with officers, are responsible for identifying and agreeing saving proposals and to support the development of the medium-term financial plan 
So this is the, so to ensure that the council can set a balanced budget. Part, part of this includes having the budget workshops, which obviously support the process, and we started these last month. The report also has four appendices. Appendix one shows the savings that relate to the House and Committee for 21-22, which in our case is the community alarm saving. Appendix two is the list of reserves that were known at the time for the, the committee. Appendix three uh, looks at the proposed future year's savings that we've discussed as part of the budget workshop. And then finally, Appendix 4 discusses the overall position where we've, as a council, have applied for exceptional financial support with the, what was MHCLG, is now the Department of Leveling Up and Communities and Housing, for what's called the Capitalisation Directive of 10.7 million, principally as a result of the, the pandemic's impact on the council's budgets over the last year or so. So the report, which is obviously originally due to go to committee earlier in the financial year, has a, a few recommendations for, to be agreed. First is to note the contents of the report. It's then to agree to the current saving proposals and for them to be further developed. The third recommendation is obviously to convene the budget workshops, which I know we've, we've started already, and to commence the zero-based budgeting exercise, which as mentioned is going to be within the adult directorate rather than within the housing services area. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mark. Um, do we have any questions from members? Stuart? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Chair. I'm just wondering if anyone can give us an update on their community alarms, how well, that's progressing. Sorry, um, do we have any updates at all on the community alarms? Alan? Thanks, Chair. So, <laughs> Councillor Whittingham, yeah, um, no updates as such, but we are um, going to run uh, an additional workshop, so we do need to look at the budget for next year as well. So we do need to follow up on the, uh, the workshop that we did as part of the budget setting process. Um, and we are inviting back adult social care colleagues to inform that discussion. As per last time, they were unable to attend the, uh, the discussion we had, so we, we cancelled that. So that, I, I'd imagine that will be in the next two or three weeks, but we'll confirm the date as soon as possible after this meeting. Okay, thank you. Stuart? Yeah, just a, a quick comment on that. Um, I'm assuming that uh, in terms of reference for any discussions of colleagues out of social care would be uh, no loss of service or extra costs uh, being loaded onto our residents. Absolutely, Councillor Whittingham. So for you, Chair, if that's okay. So that was um, made clear by, by members at the, um, the last workshop session. So yes, that's, um, that's something that we're taking into account. So we've obviously done a briefing though that's gone around housing committee members on that basis. So we are looking at um, no loss of service, but obviously the, the budget pressures are there and that's what we need to bring back as part of that discussion. But uh, certainly, um, as, as per members request last time, we are looking at making sure that there is no loss of service um, or additional costs to those individuals in receipt of it currently. Okay, okay, Stuart, happy with that? Yeah. Sorry, say again. Yeah, fine, go ahead. Um, in Appendix 3, um, future year's budget proposals, review of high cost of service, that seems very generalised. I'm just wondering, if we, is it, can we unpick that a bit? And Martin tell us what that means. So this was based upon a, a sit for benchmarking exercise that has been done over the, the last year for various sections in the, the council. Um, we're reviewing the, the figures that they've produced that have underpinned those savings because obviously they're only indicative at this stage, so they're subject to, to review. Um, and we will be bringing them up at the workshop as well to, to go through in more detail. We've done a, a report that we fed back about the, the information. Um, so I, I suspect there'll be changes to those savings coming forward. Okay, do you want to come in on that, Alan? 
Yeah, just, just to add to that, if I can, um, for members, so following on from what Mark said, um, so in terms of the medium-term financial strategy, we did look at those services which were benchmarking high against those national averages, and we did make some assumptions that we would look at those services moving forward, but um, we have done an awful lot of work, as, as Mark just alluded to, uh, to interrogate those figures, taking out grant funding that comes into the authority, looking at the core cost of service. So with all that taken into account, there will be some changes to that which we'll bring back to the next budget workshop. So if you, we just take that as a, as a sort of working budget figure at the moment, but not that we will be taken out of the budget, but that needs to be debated with members as part of that uh, discussion. Okay. Do I have any other questions? No? Yeah. Sorry, Tony. It's a rather general question. Um, I just wanted to know, um, was there a specific grant for homeless people given by central government, and how much was that? Um, yeah, we do. We receive um, what's called a homeless prevention grant fund that comes in annually for doing our homeless prevention and our homeless um, reactive work. Um, it does change from year to year, um, and I can get you, if I'll be able to send it on to the committee, the actual figure, because we did have a number of grants last year that were reported to previous housing committee around the Next Steps accommodation project. Um, there was also COVID specific funding in total as well. So last year, I think we did, or should I say, sorry, this year, um, we did receive a number of um, crossover grants as, on top of our normal ones, um, but we received a significant amount of money. It was over about 1.5, 1.6 million, but I will get the exact amount for you in terms of that. Um, but we normally get on our fridge, um, we've received about um, 535,000 in homeless prevention grant for this financial year to be used as well. Thanks, Sally. And so it was a, you're saying there was additional money because of COVID? Yeah, because there was some. There was a number of programmes that were set out by government as part of the start of the COVID um, pandemic. Some of that was around initial responses, and then some of it was in regards to continuing to move people on who obviously had um, been brought in as part of the everyone in campaign that the government um, obviously announced and we were given funding and we've still got some of that funding to work on moving people out of temporary accommodation i'm sorry can i just ask additional and would some of that money have been given to the ymca and the uh, christian art ones in birkenhead yeah, there was a um, there was a number of organisations that we did a collaboration proposal with, um, obviously MCHLG as well, um, around where the pressures were and moving away from the night shelter type provision that we had. So we moved to individual triage assessment bed spaces. So um, there were a number of agencies that did benefit from that, like the YMCA and the ARC, etc. You okay with that, Tony? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's nobody else then, I'll move on. Um, oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, I knew it was going to go wrong somewhere. Are we, um, are we happy to agree that by assent? Okay. Can I have a proposer? Yeah. I'll second. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Okay, moving on. And we've got agenda item nine, quarter one, monitor report. And again, I think this is over to you, Mark. Thank you, Chair. So the, the quarter one monitoring report for, for housing is split into four elements in the report. It looks at the, the revenue forecast, the, the savings that are associated with housing, the available reserves, and the capital resources that are available. Table one shows a high-level analysis of the housing committee services. And as you can appreciate, there's various cost centres and, and teams within that, that summary. This shows there's a, a total budget available of 7.5 million, with forecast spend for 21-22 of 7.4 million. So that gives a 155,000 favourable position, which in the main is due to staff vacancies and grant support being received. Table two shows the same information, but split by the types of spend. 
And as you can see, there's increased income from a number of grants, which includes uh, Refugee Fund and Rough Sleeper Initiative, the grants that Lisa previously outlined on homelessness, for example. The position also shows some of the funding and how this has been spent with um, pay and non-pay costs as well being, being higher. Table three shows the, the budget savings. This, as we discussed, relates to community alarm saving, which at the moment has been reported as amber status. And this is because we'll be covering this from activities across regen and place overall, so it will be delivered through mitigation whilst that review of the service is undertaken. Table four shows the available reserves, of which we have 722,000 available. Uh, and as we go through the year, we'll, we'll show the use of these reserves as we progress. Table five then highlights the, the capital program that's available for the, the committee. As you can see, at the start of the year, there's eight and a half million pounds available, and we anticipate about eight million of that to be spent this year. With the, the 500,000 variants, we'll slip into next financial year as the program works on a, a rolling basis. We're also in discussions with um, amending this for quarter two to reflect the conversations we've had about um, the adults committee showing their share of that, that allotted capital. So there are four recommendations for the report, which is for the committee to note that the, the favorable revenue variance forecast at 155,000. The, the progress on the savings for 21-22, that the amount of the reserves that's available, and to note the predicted capital forecast of 7.976 million. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, I was just going to say, do we have any questions? Over to you, Helen. Thank you. Thanks for the report. Um, we're looking at quarter one, so I'm assuming the forecast is a three plus nine, but it's the 19th of October, and it feels as though the six plus six should be available. I know, I know you have to produce in time to publish, but towards the tail end of October, to not be able to see a six plus six position, what, what, what would prevent that? Is it, is it never available the, the month after the, the month end close, the quarter end close? Part of that is the, the reporting cycle, so it goes to Policy and Resources Committee first for the Council position, and then once it's been to, to that, it then feeds through to the, the various committee services. Um, so the quarter two is just going to p and Committee, I believe in, I'm not sure if it's on the next agenda or it'll be the one after that, and then it'll come to this committee in November. So. It, it does take a while to produce the figures and obviously get the forecasts as, as, as good as we can get them for, for the year. And then there's, it feeds through that committee process as well. Okay, thank you, Mark. I've got Andrew and then Paul. You, um, okay, Andrew. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, just forgive my ignorance, but table three, you mentioned it, it's in the comments. Saving being delivered through mitigation whilst review of community alarm services undertaken. Could you just explain to me what mitigation is, how that would work? So that's where we've effectively saved money elsewhere within the department that will ensure that overall we come in on budget. Yeah, I'd, I'd just double check that with Alan, but, um, but it was through capital receipts. So. Mike. Thanks, Chair. Um, I've had a number of uh, comments made by residents that they've put in last year for aids and adaptations to the, the housing uh, th through uh, various organisations. They've been told it's already been spent before the end of the year. What I want to know is when are we looking at being spent, totally spent up? Uh, is it going to be looking at uh, the end of this year or are we going to get through to March or am I being told... Um, per people's own interpretation of what they're getting told from the council, shall we say. Okay, Th this could be a mixture between Mark and, and Lisa. Did you want to take it? Who wants to go first? Yeah, it'd Lisa. Be, it'd, it'd be me on that one. Is um, Yeah, I'd like to, by all means, please send me those cases through. Um, 
if you would please, because I'd like to review them, because the AIDS and Adaptations Grant is like a rolling programme grant that we get issued annually from government. Um, but the, the grant hasn't been fully committed as yet for this financial year. Um, and, you know, we always assess cases and look at, look at where that is. And there's usually always sufficient grant to cover you know, those cases that are coming through the door on that rolling process that comes through. So I'd be keen to know sort of and look at those cases individually to go through them and give you a more accurate position around the particular case and, and what the outcome has been. Um, we have had, obviously, there's been some delays um, to some works being done due to um, there was issues around OT assessments being undertaken during the pandemic. So we have had a backlog on some cases to actually assess them but that has started to be pulled back now so we've pulled in additional OT resources with help to health to try and do the backlog and obviously to look at getting those works that sometimes were halted because people chose to have the works obviously um, suspended during the pandemic for obviously their own circumstances which was fine um, but it, it has means we've got a bit of a backlog but in terms of the actual grants and commitments, there shouldn't be an issue if people are eligible for those works to be done. Yeah, okay. Thanks for that. Mike. I think it's just a case of people thinking the delay is uh, them getting knocked back. That's, that's what I want to find out. But that's great. Thank you very much for that. Oh, Thank no, you. you're welcome. I mean, I know of two people that quite recently have, um, have had adaptations grant and the work's been done. So. No, um, which is really good during this strange time that we're living in. Okay, are there any more questions? No, right, well, um, if we can agree by consent, uh, by assent rather, I just need a proposer and seconder. Proposed, Stuart? Seconded. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, we're almost up, back at the point again where we need Rosemary. Are you happy to pick this one up, Alan? I'm happy to. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Um, just then, in, in terms of the agenda facts, members, that there is a, a note in there about the uh, rural plan delivery plans, um, of which the inclusive economy one does include two uh, particular actions um, for, for this committee. So, as you know, the rural plan was agreed at Council on the 6th of September 2021. Um, Council also agreed the draft delivery plans that sit underneath the, the main plan. Um, that main plan gives more details about the five themes and the specific actions which we will be doing in the coming years and that is intended to underpin um, the work of the committee but also uh, the, the budget uh, setting process as well. Council recommended that the draft delivery plan should be referred to the committees for full consideration and any final comments or, or input as well. So the attached report um, gives a very generic overview. Um, a full set of the delivery plans is attached in Appendix 1. Um, members of the committee are asked to comment on the specific thematic priorities which fall in the remit of this committee. So there's one um, specifically around homelessness, um, and it links into the question before that Councillor Smith asked around um, the, uh, the, ha the homelessness uh, activity. Um, but there's one um, specifically talking about affordable housing as well. So just a couple of things I would ask you to note before we get into any questions. Would just Over the past year, we have had ongoing discussions at the committee to consider the priorities in the work programme and members have asked for those specific items on the work plan to look at either um, supporting scrutiny or supporting decision making of officers and the draft delivery plans do try to, to reflect that so comments on that would be welcomed. Um, the draft delivery plans were agreed by council as I said before so any uh, discussion this evening is not about rewriting that delivery plan but just about um, fine tuning really. Um, so any comments uh, in, in terms of maybe being a bit more spe specific would be welcome as well. Um, and we will bring back updates on these priorities to committees. So the performance framework for the committees will be based on um, the delivery plan through the dashboard detailed performance packs that are being um, uh, uh, produced. So we haven't got one of those yet, but again, we will have a workshop, I think, um, looking at Bryn. We are, we are due to have a workshop once we've done the budget setting workshops to look at performance. Um, and then we'll actually design that dashboard and performance pack to enable members to uh, be updated about the progress and developments at each committee as well. So on that chair, I'll hand back for questions if that's okay. Thank you, Alan. Thanks for stepping in. So I've got Paul and Alan and then Ian. Thanks, Chair. Um, can I ask, are we still reporting 
homelessness figures under separate categories. So, for example, rough sleepers, those in temporary accommodation, people effectively sofa surfing. And do we have up to date figures on these? And I've got a follow up which justifies this question. Yeah, there's various, obviously, government um, statistics that we have to do regularly called Delta returns. And um, so we are collecting information and reporting those, and we, we, we do have to submit those, particularly around um, and what's referenced in the delivery plan is there's some been, obviously, targets set around reducing down on those numbers in temporary accommodation as part of the COVID pandemic that we've got in in, in temporary accommodation, I should say. So we've got um, there's still 30 people that are still in temporary accommodation from the COVID pandemic that we've still got to work on. Um, and that's to be trying to be achieved by the end of this financial year. Um, obviously, that's still still a significant number, but nowhere near what we were where we were over 100 during the, during the pandemic, so a significant decrease. Um, we do report back on rough sleeping where there's indicative figures, but there's an annual national, um, obviously, programme of rough sleep accounts that is done um, that usually takes place in around the November time and I think the date has been agreed for that I think it's the 20 something I'll get you the specific date but it's the, it's the 20 something that we do obviously in partnership with a lot of the um, voluntary agencies and agencies that we work with and commission for homelessness and then that report is um, of that particular street count is reported back through national um, returns as well to government so that one will probably be likely to be verified and released probably the December January time from the outcome thanks very much through your chair as well if I could follow up on that um, in December 2019 um, the council um, led by a good friend of mine over the, to the uh, to the left of this table give a very detailed homelessness strategy uh, 28 pages of which to be exact and it gave five key, th uh, key themes which if I could be indulged I'll, I'll, I'll read out um, which was theme one protect uh, providing a joined up approach to early intervention and homelessness um, prevention across the will theme two ensure that housing related support services meet the diverse needs and complex needs of customers Theme three, preventing and ending rough sleeping. Theme four, ensuring the adequate supply of temporary accommodation is available. Um, and theme five, improving access to and developing more settled accommodation solutions. Can I ask if those themes are still live? Um, how success has been monitored and measured over the past 22 months? Um, and then, if possible, who, our partner who are our partner organisations are and how temporary accommodation is sourced and do we have adequate provision across the borough at the moment? Thank you, Paul. You, you again, Lisa. Um, yes, those actions are still relevant and that it was a five year strategy up to 2025. So it's still a strategy that's that's in place. I think government has acknowledged that some of those initial the action plan that attributed to that original strategy. Um, it's fair to say I went a little bit out the window with some of the, the, the pandemic and the changes of responses that we had to do. Um, we have had to do a, a, a brief update to MCHLG on key themes that we're working with still, and we can share that with obviously members in terms of, of that programme. And that does pick up still those five the, the key theme areas, um, particularly around temporary accommodation, as you'd said. Um, we have increased our temporary accommodation um, that's been obviously throughout the pandemic but we have still an expecting that we will still have a need for increased temporary accommodation than where we were before pre-pandemic because of those very key factors that are coming up around furlough scheme is ending changes to the universal credit is ending where there was obviously exceptions put in place around that so we are expecting to see an increase come through the door still around people and families who are affected by obviously changes that are still ongoing following the pandemic. Um, so we have increased the use of our temporary accommodation. We use a variety of temporary accommodation and that can be from individual dispersed units across the borough through to obviously the use of bed and breakfast accommodation. And we just have to manage that with the throughput that comes through the door. We try to obviously avoid use of bed and breakfast as much as possible and use the dispersed accommodation but when it's full we have to obviously move to those alternative sources 
We also try to look at, obviously, placements direct in. You talked about commission services and working with partners. We obviously have a range of commission services that are currently valued about 3.5 million in terms of the various commissions, and that is for hostel accommodation, um, more smaller supported housing placements. It covers specialist provision, so for care leavers, more generic accommodation, um, those with mental health um, issues, and also floating support services that can be linked to accommodation as people move on as well in terms of that, so a whole raft of accommodation and support-based services. Um, and that is the when you see the actual budget within the line in the report there um, for supported housing, that is where some of that large funding sits around, around that support provision. But we work with a range of different partners, um, quite a, probably a significant lot to list with right now, but you know a lot of our commission services, but also linking across to other support services that operate across the borough to help support homeless people. I hope I haven't missed any of those questions. I hope that's it. Thanks. Thanks, Lisa. That's really thorough. Um, Alan? Th thank you, Chair. I'd like to, to probe a little bit into, for a bit more detail on, on some of the, the points here. Looking at, at line one on the local plan, I see we have a target for Autumn 21 of establishing a five-year housing supply. Well, we're at Autumn 21 now, so I'd, I'd like to ask you, know, has that five-year housing supply been established? Um, how many houses are we talking about? Where are they located? And, and who's building them? What, um, uh, two more points later, but perhaps we'll take that one first. Three, if it's okay, Chair. So, um, Councillor Brain, um, a lot of this work is ongoing with the local plan at the moment, so that five-year housing supply um, has got to be identified as part of the local plan. We'll bring forward the Regulation 19 um, document, which is a draft plan that is intended to come to um, Council at the end of the year and out for consultation early in 2022. Um, that will include looking at the developable sites within that five-year period, so we've been working really, really hard. Uh, with those developers um, with a number of housing sites we can actually strengthen that five-year supply um, and then have an overall look at the 15-year supply and obviously the local plan will be based on the government standard methodology so we are looking to develop 12,000 new homes across the course of that local plan which will take into a, account a 17-year period so the work done as part of the evidence base so the, the strategic housing market assessment has all been done and we were probably pick this up on the work program later that we will bring bringing that back to committee so you can see sight of that will present the um, the strategic housing market assessment so you, you will have as members um, sight of that and where that five-year housing land supply is um, uh, suggested to come from as well th th thank you um, do I take it from that then we haven't actually hit that target of autumn 21 for establishing our five-year target that's still a work in progress Yes, because of a local plan. So there's, there's no target we haven't missed. That's what we set ourselves. But because of the work of a local plan, then um, the work on establishing that five-year pipeline is still ongoing. Um, but our, 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 and I'll, if this is okay, I will circulate around members of the committee the current performance against that as well. Um, but our, import, uh, our performance on um, that, uh, the housing numbers each year has steadily built for the last 18 months. So our performance is much better. Um, and we should set out that as a trajectory then in that five-year supply, if that makes sense. But if it's okay, I'll come back to you in terms of the, the performance I've referenced. Very much. Uh, the, 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 the second point is on, on number four. Sorry, I'm echoing and booming a bit here. Uh, the, it says new homes with low carbon net zero targets planned or in construction. That sentence seems a little vague. I mean, it's not quantified. Um, it sounds a great aspiration. But again, how many new homes are, are we seeing with the carbon or net zero targets actually being constructed? I haven't got that figure. Um, because again, a lot of this is being um, developed to the performance framework. The difficulty we've got and I keep on referring to the local plan, is the local plan is in that development phase, and we do want to track 
the um, the performance coming through the committee, obviously, with the local plan as well. Um, so if it's okay, I will I will come back on that specifically. But I know on the work program item, we're going to be covering a lot of these things as well. So in our workshop on performance, we can get into more detail on that if that's okay. Well, thank you. If the detail is not available, I appreciate you going to come back on that. So thank you. Um, the, the last one actually does have some detail attached. It's in item five, uh, talking about in this financial year, 700 units to commence on-site works, with 400 of those to be completed. Um, are we on target for achieving that? Uh, and again, roughly, where are those units located? Thanks, Councillor Brain. So, yes, we are on target for... Um, achieving that. There are m much more housing developments mobilised this year, as you're probably aware, than we've had in previous years. So um, Wirra Waters is, is obviously a, a key part of, of um, the performance we hope to achieve for this year. So uh, housing, uh, sorry, work has started on uh, North Bank now, you will see. We're due to start on site on the legacy developments in, um, in January next year as well as part of Wirra Waters. But there's a number of sites from across the, 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 the borough. So we are on target to achieve that. And again, I will bring back, or I will, I'll send out information following this committee to all members um, exactly where we're up to in terms of the performance for this year. That's been most helpful. Thank you, Alan. Okay. Thanks, Alan. Any other questions? Could I just sorry, I think I think I'll sorry. take me in first. I'm like, yeah, sorry, sorry. apologies, apologies. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, I'd just like to return to the issue of homelessness and rough sleeping that was uh, mentioned earlier. It's on the work program for discussion on the next item, but can we not make this a standing item for every committee? Because clearly the five themes that Councillor Martins referred to in the report, the strategy rather, that was uh, pushed through by Councillor Whittingham, I do feel that we should be reviewing that at every opportunity because to look at it now and again, it's not really enough of a reassurance as a committee member to know that we are doing everything possible with the resources that we have available. So I'd like to suggest in, in just to be helpful really that that is a standing item and that we can try and re, you know, track progress against those five themes in the strategy at every meeting without doing death by data. Yeah, I, I think we can bring that up in the work programme, but, but yes, I agree with you in, in essence, and I think that that is something we could probably do. Alan, you're going to... Uh, just to add to that, Chair, if I can. So, yeah, absolutely, I've got no problem with that. I think that would be a, a really good suggestion. Um, it's just getting the balance between the reports that we bring. So, if we bring that the homelessness item uh, as for the next item, for the next committee as planned, and then we can work out the standing item. Um, because, again, as you say, Councillor Lewis, we don't want to be sort of, you know, throwing lots of data and information at every committee, but if we can just agree what the standing item is and how we report that, um, and I'll deign to legal and governance colleagues in terms of the, the format, because there is um, the debate about what we can bring forward in terms of presentations, and we need to do a covering sheet, um, but we'll just make sure that we get the format for that for clear, but, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pick that up and, and we can um, pick that up at the, uh, the, the performance okay. workshop. Yeah, I mean, um, Lisa mentioned the Delta return, I think you said it was, to the Ministry of Housing that goes in, saying where, how we're performing against those particular targets. That's all we're asking for, or I'm asking for, uh, because if, if that information is being provided to the Ministry, then I think it's beholden on us as a committee to know that, that information as well. In whatever format you decide is appropriate, but I think it, it would be helpful to know. Yeah, happy to agree that. I'm sure we'd all agree with you, Wayne. So thank you for that. Um, Tony? Thanks, Chair. Uh, it's just coming back to um, what Lisa mentioned about the temporary accommodation and that. Would it be helpful if you could report back next time in the light of the benefit changes, how, whether that's increased, decreased or whatever, you know, given us a sort of a time span? Is the next meeting in January? I think that, is it January or not? No. Sorry, I think we'll tie that into the work programme. Um, That's so, part of yeah, the work programme. Yeah. I, I just think in the light of the new benefit changes that yeah, happen, no, and this uh, is kind of giving us the numbers yeah. at the moment, just to see whether it is an increase or decrease yeah, or to, whatever. Yeah, to monitor it on, yeah. Yeah, yeah is that okay? Thanks, Jim. Yeah, thanks, Tony.
Sorry, Mike, over to you. Thanks, Chair. Um, just going back to the uh, homeless uh, information, we are signatory of the Armed Forces Covenant, and I'd just like to know, do we have figures of our homeless veterans or those who are in temporary accommodation from who are veterans? Do we have that information? Uh, if we do, can we have that uh, given to us, please? Yeah, I mean, obviously through um, both we house and through Property Pill Plus and through homelessness, obviously um, there is, you know, that, that um, policy approach there to support veterans. What I can say is we probably do have some statistics, but it mightn't be the full picture because it's about sometimes whether people actually present and give and identify themselves um, through that route. But I'm sure we can we can give you some statistics, but it's just in that context that it's it may not be the full picture of who's coming through the door. Yeah, thanks. J just one more uh, question about that. Do we have any information about how long they are waiting to actually receive accommodation coming out of uh, service? Uh, I'd like to also know how long it takes them to actually get the accommodation if they're leaving service. Again, I think that that's down on a case by case basis. I think in terms of when they actually approach us, some people can be quite active and approach quite some time before they get their discharge. Um, others can perhaps approach us more nearer the time. So it's actually, um, I suppose it's how long we're working with individuals as well, um, not necessarily around when they're rehoused, if you know what I mean. So um, I'm sure we can look to try and see what we could extract in terms of information, if that's something that members feel would be useful. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Mike. I just want to pick one thing up on the uh, carbon homes, and I'd like to look in more detail um, it's just carrying on from what Alan um, started off. Um, so that we're looking at how much are we encouraging all new builds to be as carbon neutral as possible. So the type of materials that are used, looking at, it was something that was mentioned at a previous meeting I was in with, um, looking at um, uh, soaker waste. Um, so that, you know, we're, we're trying to do something about, I mean, we've all noticed that, you know, We've got, uh, you know, we've had a problem with localised flooding. So it, things like that, what are we doing about um, having charge points for cars um, on driveways so they're not going to be trailing over pavements and whatever. So it, it's a bit of a crossover with, um, with our climate change um, committee, but I'm really keen to look at how we're building homes. Thanks. So just... Drawing a few strands together, if I can, Chair. So just on that last point, I, I think that's um, a, a really good point, and I'd like to perhaps come on to the work programme discussion in a moment, talk about how we um, involve the Housing Committee in some of the work that's being done through economic regeneration on the local plan development. So we have appointed um, a, an organisation to look at a design guide for some of our key regeneration areas, and I'd like to, to perhaps um, either through workshop session or presentation at committee, uh, update members of the housing committee on, on what that means and how that um, will be rolled out in terms of the, the, the planning framework, if that's okay. Just on a, another point, I, I think I'm, I'm just on bringing it back to the, the report item. So there's um, two elements here which sit under the world plan and we will be reporting this back to committee in terms of those delivery plans. So it's been really helpful to have the discussion so we can start to sharpen some of that now. But I think what I've picked up tonight is the need for a, a wider um, performance framework that we do bring back regularly. Um, so it was the intention that to pick it up at a, a future workshop so we can look at a dashboard. Um, working with my colleague on SLT, uh, Nikki Butterworth, we are developing a dashboard that then goes through the council's operational performance group. Um, and I think you know a version of that coming back to, to this committee I think would be really helpful to pick up some of the points because I know Councillor Brain was asking for some uh, really important information there in terms of housing numbers and, and indeed Councillor Lewis saying about the, the numbers we return to MHCLG. So we'll find a way of capturing that really so it's not disparate but we'll, we'll try and bring it back as a, a dashboard um, regularly for, um, for the committee meetings. Yeah, thank you, Alan. That would be really helpful. Steve? As um, almost a guest tonight, <laughs> I don't normally sit on, on this committee but Look, looking at it, we are not the lead committee on any of the items that we are sort of looked upon as being fo the focal point from. So, so my, my concern is where there's 
reliance on partnerships, it's quite easy for one partner to blame another partner for the logjam in something or uh, an issue. Normally, um, like this recently, we've been criticised on the planning committee for, for not approving extra care housing and things like that. So firstly, I think we, we need a, as a committee to be reassured that we are not the logjam in any of the failures, because there will be failures on, on these targets. So we need to reassure ourselves we're doing everything as a within our remit. And where there are log jams, we need to kick it upstairs to the chief exec to make sure that those sections don't let the rest of the, the organisation down. It's just a, an observation. We are not the lead on anything. So we are reliant on lots of other people delivering. And we just need to ensure that that's happening. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Helen? Thank you, Chair. It was just about the themes that are cropping up that's cross-cutting. It'd be nice if um, things are explicit that are cross-cutting, but also where you've developed dashboards, instead of reinventing the wheel, if the dashboards that are pertinent to the cross-cutting themes can go to the committees in the first instance, because that's already been developed, that's already, um, those dashboards are, have been progressed and are already at their first phase of reporting. But um, instead of a silo around the key, key performance indicators for a particular committee, the plan is, and the delivery uh, plan is structured by directorate, so it's pretty easy to do the cross-cutting themes just to each committee that's appropriate. Eventually, we can have one deck for everybody. Yeah, it's, it's a really good point, Councillor Cameron, so it, it is quite a difficult, because um, we've got, obviously, moving into the committee structure, having different other the, the directorates not aligned to the committee structure and then putting in place the world plan. So there's a, a number of challenges there and I think you're absolutely right. I think getting those cross-cutting themes right so they can be reported to a number of committees is, is key. And then that, that those um, those items reported directly to the committee can be picked up in, in, in scrutiny. And Councillor Fawkes as well, uh, a really good point because I think all of work of, of, of sorry, the work of all of the committees, there is always the, the dependent on those partners, isn't there? So it's just being clear about what performance we're in complete control of and, and, and what might be, um, uh, as you say, a logjam from, from some of our partners, but finding a way to report that back as well. So that's been really useful in terms of the, um, the dashboard we need to bring back. And, and, I, and I would like to explore that further, as I said before, in, in, a, in a workshop alongside the budget um, as we move forward as part of the committee's work programme. Okay, Stuart. French Chair, uh, Alan and other members have stole me thunder slightly because certainly when I was a cabinet member, uh, both highways and housing, um, I made use of dashboards and performance reporting on a regular basis. Um, in fact, as part of the 2000 uh, improvement board, um, myself and a number of other members were closely with officers you know, working on performance uh, reporting. Um, I don't know why it seems to have fallen off the cliff. Now we're 12 months into, a new, into this new constitution and this new um, governance system. Uh, to, to me, you've got, we've got an ideal framework there in terms of it's a start, you know, the, the de delivery plan. Uh, while there's no progress uh, indicators or, or whether it's uh, red, um, amber, green or blue uh, indicators on there, I, I don't know. I just. I don't, I don't think we should be reinventing the wheel. I think we should uh, look at what we've been doing well in the past and, and build on that. Okay, thanks, thanks Stuart. Um, if we've got no more questions, um, I'd like to agree this by assent, but I need a proposer. Stuart, Andrew? Second. Yeah, okay. Uh, what do we, what's the committee agree? Note, note the report. Take yes, the sorry, to note the report. And take the account of the director's comments and the uh, yep. comments made. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, um, so we're moving on to the work programme now, and I think, I'm not sure if this is now um, not in the public domain. But it is? Okay, fine. Thank you for that. Thanks, Chair. Um, I think it's been interesting for me because lots of the reports that we've um, discussed tonight have sort of led back to the work programme. So, um, work programme sets out the items which you've discussed previously as committee, um, but also as the, the chair and spokes. Um, so we have some clear reports coming back now for the next committee in November, but also in January. Um, so just inviting comments from, from members really that um, this is what they want to see. Um, 
but, uh, but I also think that some of the debate tonight has probably led to some other items and we do need to think about um, how we bring some of those back, um, particularly those cross-cutting themes. Uh, members of the Housing Committee, I think, are, are, are keen to see some of the work that might be working its way through some of the other committees, but, you know, obviously as part of the, um, the, the, the work we need to report back on. Um, so, yeah, so o open it for uh, members, really, to make comments on what's already on the work programme, but anything they'd like to see. Okay, if I can just take liberty of um, noting a couple of things that I'd like to see on the next, um, on the next committee. Um, which would be the strategic housing uh, markets assessment. I um, think we need to see that, and that would be linked in with the LAD programme, local authority um, delivery programme, and the affordable homes. So I'd certainly like to be seeing those. Um, I don't know if anybody else agrees, disagrees, or if there's anything else different yes, that you'd like. Yeah, yes, Chair. Yeah. Sorry, me. Andrew? Yeah, if I could make the point, because it does seem to me that the, the local plan is, is racing ahead in one direction, even if we don't quite know where it's at. But our work programme, you know, could be superseded by the local plan. So the two have to work together, don't we? have to consider fully um, what we think is right and what we need to influence in the local plan. It seems to me that time is short to do all that we would need to do in that. Okay, Stuart. Yeah, can I ask um, regarding the property pool plus allocations policy consultation? That, that was ongoing back in the day um, when I was the cabinet member, and that was, uh, as far as I was aware, nearly completion. I was just wondering, has there been a delay on that? And what's the closing date for the consultation? Because if we're, if we're going to be have an impulse into it, it needs to be meaningful. The uh, and, not, and not right at the very end of the process where, you know, because obviously we. we the, the allocations policy needs to be agreed by the by all the, the councils within the city region. Um, so I, I, I don't want to be leaving it too late, yeah. whereby we can't so meaningfully uh, inform that debate. The consultation is complete, I believe, but I'm going to ask Lisa to come in more fully on that. Um, yeah, the, um, the proposed policy that went for consultation obviously was brought to housing committee members. I think it, it, it was the first committee, actually, it was the new... The, the new um, committee structure um, and obviously there was some comments fed back as part of that before it went out to, to wider consultation. The consultation has ended, um, as you've rightly said, it's a Liverpool City Region approach in terms of because it's a common allocations policy. The um, comments from the um, consultation are being fed in to the policy document and we're currently just seeking across the city region. We've obviously um, seeking some um, external um, barrister um, specialist support around um, some of those policy changes and whether they are um, meet our legal responsibilities. And it's intended at the moment, there is a programme that's being coordinated from the combined authority around the timescales, as you say, because it's got to go through each of the authorities, committee systems. Um, so it's mapping out exactly when it will go to each committee and when it will be finally signed off as a collective um, to go through to the House and Spatial Planning Board as well as part of the CA governance route. Um, but we will be coming back to House and Committee with the recommendations, the advice that we've had, obviously, in terms of legal around the proposed policy changes for a formal sign-off, but it has to also go, which I'm sure Matthew may, may come in as well as um, on the legal side, it has to go to formal ratification, I think, through policy and resources and full council for sign-off. Okay. Um, are you happy with that, Stuart? Okay. Do we have any other? Harry? Yeah, uh, there's no mention of tackling empty uh, properties. Is that something we will be looking at or we can make room for? Sorry. Um, ye yes, we have. We, we previously brought reports on empty homes to committee. Um, I think that was last... Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was last year, wasn't it? Yeah, in terms of empty homes, where we were up to what we were doing. Um, the works and the financial support we put around that and actually what we've been achieving. I suppose, again, it's, it's up to obviously members' consideration around whether they want some indicators um, back as part of that dashboard around some ongoing updates or whether there's anything specific um, on top 
that members are wanting to review again as part of that anti-homes work. Yeah. I think for myself, um, I'd like that just included on the dashboard so that we can see where we are um, and whether we're, you know, where we expect to be um, and how quickly we can turn those empty homes into um, lived homes, lived in homes. So, okay. Alan? Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, we've obviously gone quite a long period without having a committee meeting, and now we've got a few coming in quick succession. And so we, we can't really expect to cover everything in detail in November. Um, so I'm th looking forward to January as well. I, I would like us to look at the private sector stock condition report. I think that's very important. Um, just looking slightly further ahead so we can phase the different things we're going to need to address. Alan, I think we could actually bring that in on our next committee so we'd have full, um, full committee items. Um, certainly we were discussing that before. Lisa, do you want to come in on that? Yes, please. I think what was being um, proposed from obviously previous discussions with uh, party spokes as well was the fact that yes, we would have a private sector stock condition survey report to, to the, the next committee. Um, and that would tie in nicely with the local authority delivery retrofit programme that's being done because that's all about improvements to the private rented stock and the existing stock and how are we raising standards and energy performance um, within those existing homes. So probably quite nicely aligned in terms of the discussions around those two reports. I think um, the report that obviously was referred to around the budget for the outturn for last year would be coming to the next next committee and um, I think the one obviously which was talked about before about strategic housing market assessment closely aligned and perhaps with some of the issues that have been raised about how what are our housing needs how are we going to deliver it what are the numbers that have got to be delivered and included in that strategic housing market assessment will be obviously the targets around um, linking back to the government's first homes agenda with regards to how affordable housing fits in your strategic market assessment and your housing needs. So I think it was those four sort of reports that was were being considered to be proposed for the next committee. And then obviously looking at perhaps any particular key ones for the, for the committee meeting after that, that anyone wants to bring forward. Okay, I'm gonna to go to Stuart. Um, Stuart. Yeah, just one last one for me. Um, I'm not suggesting that it needs to go on uh, near term, but I think it'd be chair that's not for us to um, consider the impact of the, the next government's net zero strategy, so which was announced today. So I think yeah, that, that, that needs to be a, an item we need to consider uh, and how it's going to impact the work we do and the work on you know, the housing on Wirral, um, I suppose, over the next, maybe, maybe probably into the new year or maybe you know, we're into the, into the next municipal year. Okay, thank you, Stuart. Are there any other um, any other comments to make on the work programme? Let's make one there. Final group, chair. Um, just linking to Councillor Gardner's question before, I think the strategic housing market assessment starts to update the committee in terms of the evidence base for the local plan. So we'll make sure that that report contains a uh, re well, an up-to-date timetable of what the um, the uh, key milestones are in terms of a local plan moving forward. We will be looking to have a, um, a local plan subcommittee sub working group um, meeting sometime soon, so I'll make sure that work reads across as well, so you've got an updated committee of where we're up to with the local plan. Okay, thank you everybody. I think that um, if I can have, um, I'd like to propose the work plan with what we have so far. If I've got a seconder, please. Andrew? Okay, thank you for that. And if there's no other questions, that's the end of the meeting. Thank you. Please don't book any football matches for the next one because it's going to be a lot longer than this. Thank you. <laughs>